Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Chronicles of Hollywood History, past, present, and future. Welcome, and here now, Corey Gomez. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Chronicles of Hollywood History, past, present, and future. Today, I am joined by Marshall Teague. You may know him as Jimmy from Roadhouse. I know him as Nick from Guardian Angel and Gavin from A Dangerous Place, more so. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate it. It's a pleasure. Thank you for having me. You know, I have to ask, I always ask, the, the first question I always ask is how you got started in, in the business, but the one I want to know first uh, you're fighting in, I have to say, in Roadhouse, because, you know, it was a great fight. Um, Patrick Swayze, well-documented. He was a dancer. W w you were um, trained in martial arts before that, correct? Oh, yes. <laughs> Kickboxing is, is going to be my guess. Yes, you are absolutely okay. correct. Who did you train with? Well, I started in, at the University of Seoul in Korea. As a young man, I went to live with relatives over there with the uh, Methodist Missionary Service and either learn how to dance, you know, and learn the arts of the country, wear the clothes, or learn to fight. So that's where, that's where I got started. And you do, some of your moves look like they were uh, a little bit of hop keto, am I correct, by chance? Yes, well, I, right. uh, 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 Bang Sung Moon, I studied with him for many years. He was a uh, former rock with the Korean military and uh, also was uh, worked with the president. Of Korea as a bodyguard, and you know, in Los Angeles, worked with him for several years, and just, just you know, we became very close. Good, good man, hard man. You know, didn't didn't put up with any crap, and, which I appreciated. So, how after the martial arts? Thing, also, also, Con, uh, Con Ri in uh, Memphis. I don't know if you've ever heard of Con Ri. I have not. Well, the Con Ri was in uh, Memphis. He was a big one. That was. Uh, Elvis time, you know, I studied with Elvis, you know, Elvis trained with him. Oh, okay. And then military school after, before that, you know, was, that was judo. And so it just, it just keeps going backwards and backwards and backwards. How long, um, do you still study to this day? I don't, I don't go into class anymore. No, I just haven't had the time to do that. No, just, I train myself here at home. You know, I have things that I continue to train with, just to, you know, keep, uh, somewhat current mm -hmm. but as far as taking the time to uh you know work at work in a dojo and going back to class you know and, and take care of my home take care of my family that kind of stuff ah, no <laughs> <laughs> i uh and, I and besides that i don't stretch as well as i as i used to years ago no i don't i don't stretch good either after i had uh needed to get back in shape my son had watched the uh, perfect weapon and my son's 11. He had already earned his junior black belt in Taekwondo, and he mm -hmm. wanted to learn Kenpo. And yeah, I'm 46, and he was like, well, will you take it with me? And I was like, you know, I've never learned Kenpo. I will take it with you. And we were both doing really good, and then the pandemic hit, so we have not been back to the dojo in about uh, six months now. So, well, Are you thinking about picking it back up? Oh, yes, once this ends. The uh, last place I want to roll around right now is on a mat. <laughs> well, yeah, I, yeah, I... <laughs> Yeah, I can see your point. I can see your point. I, uh, I work the I, bag at home. Well, I, you know, I have I have Earl. Earl's my anatomical correct person that I can punch on. I call him Cousin Earl. <laughs> so I go and work with Earl quite you know quite often, and um, just grips, chokes, I, you know, just anything I can do to keep it sharp and keep it moving. Jump a little rope here and there. Work with the swords. You know, just pick something up. And go back into it and say, okay, where did I leave you off? Uh, you know, the last time I picked you up. So, you know, you don't want to, you never lay it down. You know that yourself. Yes. You never, you never, you never, you cannot possibly ever put it away. It mm -hmm. never, it never leaves you. No, I call, I consider it a life sport. I, I consider it a love sport. Well, you got to train with uh, Benny, Benny the Jet. Oh, Yeah. Benny, uh, Superfoot Wallace, used to used to spar with him. He, he and I were sparring partners many, many years ago for one of his world titles, as a matter of fact. And, of course, Chuck Norris, you know. Oh, the, yeah. The, 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 the king himself, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, I said, Benny, the Jet. And when you mentioned Benny, the Jet, 
it's interesting. A lot of people, some people know of him, you know, some people that are not, you know, into the martial arts as much. They, they say, who? I say, no. What? I said, Benny the Jet was a machine. The greatest fight scene in movie history is Benny the Jet versus Jackie Chan and Wheels on Meals. I, I mean, I'll, yeah. I'll put that against anything ever. I have to agree with him. I have to agree with him. Now, ben, Benny, Benny, you know, Benny was, he was just a machine. The kindest, the kindest man that you ever want to meet, that you never wanted to get a spinning heel kick delivered by. You know? <laughs> I mean, what do you have? Twenty? I think he had twenty-one knockouts. Oh, twenty-one knockouts, all with a spinning heel kick. Yeah, he was always one of my favorite fighters. Don the Dragon was another one of my favorite fighters too. Another one. There you go. We're just going to go through the litany of everybody that we know. Yeah. <laughs> well, I've got to. I've got to ask then. How did you get started in acting? Oh wow! How did I get started in acting? Well. You may or may not know I was deputy sheriff. Mm -hmm. I retired out of the Navy, and then when I retired out of the Navy, I became a deputy sheriff. Well, I was going to be going undercover, and, uh, and I just came up with a bright idea. Okay, I want to be really good. I'm giving you the kind of the Reader's Digest version of this, but not not meaning to cut you off or anything. No, you're good. But I just, I just thought that, you know, I'm going to study acting to be a better cop. Mm -hmm. I had no intentions of ever being an actor whatsoever, not even the slightest, because I just knew that people would bust my chops all the time. Oh, look at him, he's an actor, you know, that kind of thing, which they did. But I studied acting to be a, a better cop, and uh, somewhere along the line, <coughs> excuse me, the bug, so to speak, got inside of me, and I started questioning, okay, why, why do I feel this way? Or what, what is it about this that allows me to feel something else? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then I said, you know, I, I wrote a letter to um, Hal Needham. Hal Needham probably, you know, at the time, at one time, was probably one of the most famous stunt coordinators in the business. He did a lot of the, you know, movies with uh, uh, Burt Reynolds. Mm-hmm. And directed him. I wrote him a letter, you know, and sent him my picture, my resume, and a little bit about my background. And he said, "Well, you certainly have the background to be a stunt man, that's for sure." But he said, "You know, the way you look, you ever thought about being an actor?" You know, I studied acting, but you know, the word actor didn't come about in that. And I said, "Well, I'll give it a try." He said, "You could probably be a stunt man, but you got to understand that most stunt people come from families of stunt people." You know, you're talking about three generations of stunt people in here. And it's a very small group of people. And I get that because I've known in my 42 years, I've known so many stunt people. And they're just, they're very tight group. And I just got in and said, yeah, why not? So I came out to L.A. and started studying, got me a, I actually lived in a janitor's closet at a, at a, at a, <clears throat> at a motel. I think now I'm trying to think of what it's called now, but it, I think it's called the Beverly Garland. It was called the Beverly Garland Hotel at one time on uh, yeah, there, and I, I paid the janitor off in beer and uh, in case a couple of cases of beer and a bottle of Jack Daniels. <laughs> he let me put a cot up in the janitor's closet where I could sleep at night. He showed me how to get in at night so I could have the deep sink to wash and shave and you know that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. I was in there for a few weeks till I could find a find an apartment, and then uh, he was, you know, I left and got my apartment, and acting coach, and I just started beating the bushes. That's how it started. How'd you land the part? Is your probably your most famous part? Your, your, one of your first parts is Jimmy in Roadhouse. I got that in front of mine. <clears throat> Barry Delaney, who was the uh, <clears throat> border. Excuse me, I've got to clear my throat. Thank you. Mary Delaney, who was the wardrobe, in charge of the wardrobe department for uh, some movies that uh, were being done by Joel Silver, the you know, executive producer, mm -hmm. at the time uh, was a lethal weapon. And I was brought in because of certain background things to train and work with Mel Gibson for that. And, you know, they said, well, you're going to get this role on, you know, the movie here, which never happened. It didn't happen. 
uh, Mel remembered it. You know, years later, he wrote, uh, ran me off the road, gave me a cigar, and just talked to me. He said, you know, thank you for helping me find rigs, you know, which <laughs> was a very, very nice compliment. But uh, the same executive producer came up, and Roadhouse was coming up. And I uh, can't think of the guy who's, uh, you know, excuse me if I just have brain fade sometime, but... There was a guy, a very well-known actor, that was up for the part, and he decided he didn't want the part. Yeah, I didn't want to do it. I don't know whether it was the fighting or whatever it was, but uh, but Barry said, you remember that guy I brought in, the same, same executive producer, he said, you remember the guy I brought in here for Mel? He said, why don't you bring him back in, because this is what he does, you know. They already knew, they brought me in, my interview lasted a grand total of three minutes. I walked in, sat down, they talked to me, and they said, you know, you like to fight. I said, no, I love to fight. <laughs> can, can you act? Yes, I've had roles in that year. You know, this is what I've been doing up till this time. Okay, you're hired. You start in two weeks. And that was it. That was the interview. And the rest just kind of, I don't know, um, kind of developed on its own. You know, the friendship and the friendship with Buddy, which turned into a, Man that I love and I miss every day of my life. You know, yeah, it became that close. We were just, you know, you, when you do that with somebody and he's, he's fighting a person, you're you're going at it. I mean, it's, you know, everybody thinks it's a that we beat the crap out of each other. And I think everybody knows that at this point. That was there was not a lot of there was a lot of impact in that, in that fight. Oh yeah, there was. There's no way some of those punches could have been uh, pulled or telegraphed. No. And uh, we did it, and the reason we did it was because we decided, you know, and it was after he kicked me, uh, he kicked me in the chest, and then I threw him down, I said, if that's the best kick you've got, this is going to be a lousy fight. <laughs> this is the second try at this, and he stood up, didn't say a word, he just said, roll camera. We, and they rolled camera. He hit me the third time. I scooted across the ground about 10 feet on my butt. <laughs> <laughs> I looked at him, I was a little aired out, I looked at him, I said, that's a kick. <laughs> he came over and he stuck, his, stuck his hand out and I took it and he helped me up he said you like this shit don't you I said no I love this shit <laughs> I really do he said what do you say we don't cheat the audience for once I said I said you saying what you you saying what I think you're saying he said yeah that's, that's why I can roll he said let's kind of leave the faces alone because we've got to finish the move but what do you say we just don't cheat him I said you came to the right place and the rest is history Whose idea was it to have Swayze do the, because uh, you never saw it in films unless you watch an old Shaw Brother movie. Whose idea was it for him to do a tiger claw sh uh, strike to your throat? Well, uh, I think that was Benny. Because Benny, uh, Benny is a, has a lot of open pop strikes he'll do. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he does that. Uh, and uh, when you're getting in a little close, not, we're not in his regular classes, but when you're working about working technique, you know, with Benny. Mm-hmm. You know, you, obviously you're talking about things to get the job done and can't get the job done really quick. And there's a lot of strikes you do, whether it be carotid or in the uh, esophagus, chest, soloplex, under the arm, toward the heart, that kind of thing. There's a lot of blows you can do that can incapacitate somebody very easily if you do it correctly. And it's not something you go out and practice, but he came out with the, he came up with the idea to do that. And that was a cool he said, move. He said, he said, just make it, let's make it different because everybody else is always kicking them or beating them or stomping them or hitting them with a brick or yeah. whatever. But you don't really see somebody actually coming up and taking the throat out. No. You know, yes, can the throat be crushed? Yes, it can very easily. But uh, he came up with that idea, and I think uh, he and Buddy kind of worked it out together how they would do it, you know, using the style and the grace, and I will say grace, that Buddy – you know, so eloquently had. And then when he pulled it off, you know, it was, it read beautifully. You know, you, you get to do that. You get, to, I mean, you show off your martial arts skills, showed off some great staff work with that pool cue. Thank and, you. And then a couple of years later, you get to work with probably the greatest female in the history of martial arts to this day, uh, Cynthia Rothrock. You got to work with her in <laughs> Guardian Angel. And I, I mean, to me, that's the queen of martial arts right there. Well, I mean, she was uh, she was world champion form. So I think what three years in a row. Yeah, she's and she doesn't age. Oh no, no, 
It's beautiful Cynthia, today. Cynthia's, she was 30 she, years ago. Yeah, yeah. I mean, she's got the same smile, you know. she got the same energy level, which is always high speed and low drag. Did you get to spar? Did you uh, work out with her, spar with her at all? Oh, yeah, 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 you know. I mean, you know, we we threw them. I mean, obviously, we weren't fighting each other, but yeah, we went in. And it worked on. She'd catch. I'd catch for her. And she would, you know, throw. Yeah, because she would tell the horror stories of in, you know, in Hong Kong, they just pad you up, and she would take like just beatings all day long over there. Well, they have a little bit a different way of going about it. Yes, they do. But I didn't really think about it that much. Yeah, you know, we we had we had pads. We had pads, and you know, had, you know, some arm braces and thing like that, but. No, I just say throw it. But I'm used to I'm used to having it thrown at me, so it didn't really bother me. Mm-hmm. You know, and she got a chance to you know really loosen up, and so did I. <laughs> you know, I got to do the same thing. But um, yeah, and like I said, it was it was just a, it was a good shoot. She's a nice person. Think the world over. You know, and yeah, and you're right in that in that realm, she's the queen. You know, and then the one I've been waiting to talk to you about. You did for PM Entertainment, A Dangerous Place. Um, Dangerous Place was a good story, kind of an evil karate kid type story. You had Mako in there as, as the sensei. Oh, yeah, Mako. I love Mako. But you had, and I, and I understand, he was a name. And it's no knock against him personally. But what's always troubled me, and, and everyone I know that's watched it, Corey Feldman uh, a great actor. He was the uh, evil martial arts master. And he could not even throw a punch. And I was always oh, so ashamed because I was like, if you're going to go and do a movie part, could you take at least one class? Okay, it was name value. You know that. Oh, yeah. And and you notice in the fights when he was uh, fighting the young gentleman there in the last or you know in the ring at the last big match and everything else like that when he showed the kicks being thrown he showed it it was shooting Corey from the rear mm-hmm. obviously because it wasn't Corey you know Corey was there for the close ups of you know the hand drawing back and trying to throw a punch and then whatever and you know showing him look like he's throwing a kick but that's Corey can't, you know he's not a martial artist. He's an actor. That's what he does. You know, some you know some of us, and I say, I mean it, in the nicest form, are blessed to be able to do all of that. And there are people that claim they can, but they're, you know, they're, not everybody can. But uh, Corey was the actor, and he played the character. I mean, I, I mean, look at it. I had three personalities in the movie. I was a teacher. teacher Come on. I was a teacher. A and then, I, then, I, then I, was the, I was the heavy-duty martial arts instructor. Then I was running this fencing all the goods my men were stealing you know yeah. come on this, this guy had three different personalities plus a death wish for anybody that he didn't like so <laughs> it was in the beginning when he's like you see him actually fighting this other kid and he's trying to throw just standard straight punches and it was like oh this is the worst i've ever seen but oh, yeah, you mean when he was bouncing up and down oh it was awful but now the other young kid uh, ted jan roberts he was fantastic he had some really good moves, been practicing, you know, been in it for a while since he was a little kid. I mean, he'd been practicing. Plus, he was naturally just as, you know, he was a pretzel. You know, he was a freaking pretzel. Mm-hmm. You could tie him up, he'd stretch out, he'd fall into a stretch. I mean, it's, you know, the guy would, I gotta stretch out. <laughs> you know, he's kind of like, I hate you, kid. <laughs> you know, but he just had that natural flow and he could, he could move his, his air work, his aerial work was good. His, his kicks were, his extension was great. And um, with all due respect, he made Corey look like a better ass than he was. Mm-hmm. And, you know, uh, and he did it, knowing that. But he, the guy he thought that was the double, you know, could could bring it. He could bring it. But then the other kid was, you know, felt quite comfortable that way, you know, uh, what was his first name again? Uh, Ted. 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 But he was, you know, and he liked that because he could let it go what he did. That's where he could, you know, he had somebody he knew could bring it and and, uh, and could give him something to go at. You know, he he just he just excelled. 
excel. And, you know, like I said, when you talk about uh, Corey, uh, Corey did his job as far as the actor. He did his job. But he didn't, you know, we would be out stretching. We'd, you know, be stretching out. You know, everybody was there. We'd be, you know, in my class, I'd have them all stretching out. We'd be working, trying to get everybody loose so they could do this, you know, and get their attitudes good and, and uh, let, them, yeah, let them throw at me. I'd, I'd catch one. You know, let them get their legs going. Mm -hmm. And and Corey, you know, just, I don't, I don't really do, I don't really do that. I, okay, fine, go. But don't make us look like idiots. Mm. Was he? He did. He did listen in that respect. I will have to say that when he would say, "What is? What is this? I'm looking for." Right? You know, you you tell him, "This is where you're at. This is what you've just received. Mm -hmm. You just received this gig. It friggin' hurts. Trust me. Mm -hmm. You know. So don't don't look like you didn't get touched. You know, because you get touched by one of these, it's, you're going to feel it. Was he pretty good on set as far as professional yeah, back then? For the most for the most part, yes, he was. Yes, he was. I mean, he came in, he did his job. Granted, you know, I think there was a part of that. And I don't know. I can't say for sure. Uh, it's merely just speculation. All right? I think there was a part of it that may have been uh, intimidating mm -hmm. to him. You know, because all these people were, you know, standing up beside him, talking, carrying on a conversation while they lift a sidekick up and held it up in the air while they're talking to you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and you're sitting there wondering if you could bend over to tie your shoes. <laughs> and I think that was part of it. But as far as his job and doing his job, he was very professional. Can't say, can't say, I can't say anything bad about him at all. When, and, and like I said, to me, he was always courteous. I bet he thought, I know. He thought, he thought I was scary. He told me during the class, <laughs> "You're a very scary man." I said, "Why?" Why? He said, "Because you're just a very scary man." I said, Corey, I'm not going to do anything, man. He says, no, it's just your look. When you look <laughs> at people, you look at people. I said, okay, Corey. <laughs> well, I bet I can name two guys you don't have a bad thing in the world to say about that you worked with in uh, a couple years later in Fists of Iron. And I'm talking about two of the nicest people I've ever had the pleasure of meeting. You got to work with uh, Sam Jones and the best bad guy of the 90s, Mateus Hoos. Oh, you know how I feel about them. You don't even have to go there. Two of the nicest men. Oh, I mean. Mate, my, my wife and Mateus, I mean, they were good friends. And, you know, and I was good friends with Mateus. And Sam, I can't say enough good things about Sam. I just did a movie with Sam this past, uh, last year. It was a story of, uh, it was called uh, uh, A Silent Natural. It was a movie about the first deaf mute, mute Baseball player in the major leagues back in 1890. I see. Boy. Tyler Maine. Yeah, and I mean, that's uh, Branscombe, mm -hmm. you know, right there. And it was nice to see his charming face every morning. <laughs> you know, every coming, hey, brother, how you doing? I said, I'm ready to go. Said, You're always ready to go. I said, where do you need me? We'll call you. <laughs> you know, I just want to, we'll call you. But having everybody there, you know, uh, it was like, it was like, it was like a reunion. You know, if you really want. I mean, everybody worked on it. It was like, we'd all worked together before. Cherie, you know, and, and, and Sam. And it just, you know, just coming to work every morning was a pleasure. And when you work with people like that, and you go, and they come up, and, you know, Sam comes up, he gives you this great big bear hug. Marshall, I love you, man. I just want you to know that I love you, man. <laughs> he gives you this huge bear hug, you know, and it's kind of like, Sam, I miss you, man. I miss you too, bro. Okay. It's just all good stuff. And Mateus, he's one of the sweetest guys. He's oh, one of the yes. sweetest guys you ever want to meet in your life. He's just a big, I mean, he's a big, huge, big guy. And I don't think he's changed a bit. No, he's still big. Yeah, he's still big. And, you know, he's just this big guy. But Mateus is just a sweetheart. And working with him was a hoot. I, we laughed so hard. <laughs> we <Yeah>. laughed so hard. <laughs> Oh God! But yeah, you're talking about two two people that I hold in very highest esteem. When I interviewed uh, Mateus, you know, I had only seen him in the movies. You know, there's this big monster, and you know, I was like, "Hi, Mr. He's like, oh, hello, my friend. How are you? Very soft." You know, I was like, "Wow, this is not I, what I expected." We, if, as long as he didn't say, "We come in peace." No, no, I got scared then. <laughs> yeah, I would have been too. <laughs> 
And say for yeah. I got to meet Sam Jones, and you know my family. You know we got to meet him at a convention. I interviewed him, you know, down the road and all that. Another guy, you know, and, and I always felt bad because everybody always just thinks of him as Flash Gordon, and it's like, God, he's got to have a hundred other movies under his belt, you know. And, yeah. and so I, I, mean, I, I didn't really talk about Flash Gordon. Well, I mean, we did walk. We did walkers together. You know, you know, you know, you know Walker Texas Rangers together, and then you know, yeah. I mean, but he, you do you do one movie that. I mean, people come up and they mention Roadhouse. You know, this Roadhouse, Marshall. Yeah, okay, Roadhouse, got it. And you know, you figure you have done fifty-two other movies. And, uh, mm-hmm. Some of them are pretty good-sized movies too. But uh, still, it's the same thing with Sam. I mean, that was a character. That was a. It started out as a cartoon, and uh, well, it actually, started out in black and whites. Yeah, and you could black, black and whites back in the day when you know Flash Gordon, uh, Buster Crab was doing it, and then to bring it into the era that he was doing it, you know, and, and here's this big, strong-looking, virile, big guy, you know, with a commanding voice, and, you know, what's what's not to like? Mm-hmm. Just He's just a good guy. You know, speaking of good guys, and, and I personally, this, this person I've never had the pleasure to talk to, you have been in, uh, you know, the Cutter, uh, Walker. You've had a good relationship over the years, it seems like, with Chuck Norris. Oh, gosh. It goes back a long way, long before before movies. Oh, okay. He's one of my heroes. <clears throat> no, he just, he just uh, you know, we sparred. You know, we used to spar in the ring and exhibition matches, things like that. And, then, you know, we just ended up in the business together, you know. You know don't, no, I never called him up said, hey, Chuck, or you know, I, everybody called him Chuck. I call him Carlos, but, but you know, I never would do that. But uh, my name came up in a casting thing on the, again the first Walker that was being shot, and my name came up. And he said, "Who?" He said, "Marshall T." He said, "Hiring." <laughs> he said, "Hiring." He said, "Well, why, Mar- why Chuck? You know, why you know?" He said, first of all, I know the guy. Second of all, I know what he can do, and I trust him." And he's a good actor, so hire him. So I got hired and didn't end up doing, what, nine or ten other walkers and, you know, movies with him, you know. And I just, I love the guy. I mean, he's kind of like my best friend. Yeah, I mean, he's the, uh, you know, because I have a black belt in Tang Soo Do. It was one of the first styles I studied. Nowhere near as, you know, close to Chuck Norris level, but uh, you know, he was an inspiration. You know, he was more like, a lot of people say they were inspired by Bruce Lee. I was more the Chuck Norris and uh, he's always the one I said, you know, and everybody would say, well, what if Van Damme and Speakman? And, you know, when they throw out all the actors, I was like, I, in my opinion, I was like, Chuck Norris, a world champion. He'd wipe the floor with all of them. He'd clean her house. He'd clean her plow. Yeah, I, I, I think. I, I can tell you for a fact, I know how hard he hits for a fact. And I know how hard he kicks for a fact. And I know how fast he is for a fact. You know, you hear other people talk and you say, okay. First of all, Van Damme was a, he was a, he was a dancer ballet, too, he was, wasn't he? Was he? A ballet, well, he's a ballet dancer. Yeah. And I, by the way, I made the mistake before of saying that, making that statement with, uh, with Buddy, uh, Buddy Swayze. And, uh, and then when I hit him and I realized this guy could take it and not only that, but he'd dish him out, I changed my attitude about the boy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I had a lot, I built a lot of respect for him, but, uh, you know, with Van Damme, you know, did he have some beautiful leg work? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Very few people could get up to what he, you know, his his kicks. The only other person I know that really does that, you know, proficiently was Superfoot Wallace. Gary Daniels was no slouch. No, no, you're right. No, Gary, I, yeah, you're right. Yeah, I'll give, you, I'll give you that one. Yeah, he was, he could get up there and hold it and kick you. Like a, you know, kick you like, uh, Daniels would kick you like, like, same thing with Superfoot, though. He would throw his kicks oh. like, some people throw a jab. Mm-hmm. He could throw a kick the same way, both of them. Now, Carlos didn't do that. His his kicks, he was very fast and, and, and clean. He'd get them in there. But he had a lot of, you know, had a tremendous amount of power by his kicks. Yeah, he, uh, yeah, that was, the, you know, I mean, I mean, plus, I mean, the guy, I mean, he's, spawned generations of fans you know everyone discovers him so he's uh he's pretty timeless in the world of martial arts well when you think about when you think about eastern europe there was you know uh 
when you think about when learning martial arts was uh, against the law, you know, in Russia, mm -hmm. it was against the law for people to study martial arts because they didn't want to have people that could come over and take over, you know, whatever. Well, they had pirated films of Chuck Norris. That's how they started their martial arts, hmm. from pirated films of Chuck Norris. And that's no joke. I know, I've talked to him. You've been beating Carlos, up by him Carlos, I've been a lot of places. Well, Carlos and I've been a lot of places together over the years, you know. But uh, you hear it everywhere you go. People said, "Yeah, I started learning martial arts by watching your films." Mm -hmm. And I talk about pick a country, you know, and you, you got that from many countries, especially in, in the you know the European on the European uh, continent. Yeah, you hear that a lot. You know, another martial artist who that you got to work with that I never thought got the credit he still doesn't get the credit he deserves uh, you, your uh, three episodes of Renegade with Lorenzo Lamas Lorenzo, Lorenzo was a good martial artist he was very good and, and you know and I would tell people that I was like watch one of his movies like oh that the pretty guy you know like that and it was like no he's I said he's a well, hell of no, a, it's, hell see, of a martial that, artist yeah he, he studied he's a black belt Mm -hmm. he, he got his black belt. No, he studied. He got his black belt, and you know. But you know, the problem was is exactly that because of the shows. When you think of what was it? Uh, was it? Was it Falcon Crest? Falcon Crest, yeah. Falcon Crest. I mean, he was the good-looking dude, man. I mean, he was the handsome dude. And then, of course, in Renegade, he was another handsome dude. And all his movies, he's been this handsome dude, you know. And then. You know, you put, it, put him out there and give him fighting, and they, they don't think it's really him doing it. And I, I told people, I said, no, you're absolutely wrong. The guy is, he is the real deal. He had a lot of snap on his kicks. Oh, yeah. His, his, uh, his, uh, his roundhouse, his roundhouse mm -hmm. was very quick. He was very quick on his roundhouse. And he had a really good sidekick. He had a real good sidekick. His spinning kicks were okay. But for some reason, he couldn't get around. I mean, he could deliver the kick. Some, there wasn't you know, the extension. I mean, it was it was hard. Don't get me wrong. It was hard. But he had the ability to get a lot more umph into it. And I don't know whether he just something, he just didn't deliver it the way he could. And I knew he could. But he just didn't throw it that way. You know, he just didn't throw it that way. I got but he did, a, he did a spinning heel kick was one he liked a lot. You remember that? Yeah. And he, he, he did that inside in, in, inside outside sweep kick. He would do that one a lot. And, but he was proficient. And his hands were good. He had good hands. Yeah. He has good hands. Let me, let me, let me correct that. I'm speaking the past tense because it's not past tense. He has good hands. You know, so people, you know, people look at it, and, it, it, and a lot of that was, like you said, it was because, it, because of his, his, you know, you got a great looking guy like that, and you think, think he's not what he's being made out to be, and, you know, he is. So, you know, people just need to take a step back and reassess. Another movie you did in 97 that I'm a big fan of, uh, you had a smaller part in it, is called The Bad Pack with the, my childhood hero who passed away a few years ago. It was very sad. Uh, Rowdy Roddy Piper. Oh, yeah. What a, you're talking about Rowdy God. What a, what a su super, super guy. Everybody looks at him and they get, uh, he's this crazy, crazy Irish, Scottish, whatever, running through there. He was one of the, Easiest going guys you ever want to meet in your life. <laughs> and, uh, you know, never got, never got the credit. And he was, as far as an actor, he could bring it a lot in there. And he, you're right, he did not get the credit. Didn't get the credit. No, he was a great actor. You know, and I hope down the road somebody will say, you know, Marshall T. Yeah, he did all this stuff. But I hope they, down the road they say, you know, he's a pretty damn good actor, too. <laughs> Well, you, and you got to also work with uh, someone else I'm going to be interviewing soon, uh, Ralph Molay, if I'm pronouncing his last name correctly. I think you are. Another when monster you, well, that could really move. When are you going to, when are you going to be talking to him? Uh, next weekend. Well, give him my best when you talk to him. I will. I'm, uh, uh, that was another guy that, I mean, here's a, I mean, geez, what, six foot four, what, probably 280, and, and he could flip around like the best of them. Well, you didn't want to, you didn't want to be in front of him. No, God, no. Yeah, it's like getting hit with a bus, <laughs> you know. And 
I don't know of anybody that truly wanted to be standing in front of him when he, you know, did anything because you know there's a lot of power there. There's a tremendous amount of power. Not the, not the, and he could move that. He could move that way. You know. Oh, he kept but, up with Philip Ray in um, Best of the Best too, and that's I mean that's an accomplishment in itself. Well, you know, you've you've you know you've obviously you've obviously done your homework on a lot of them and obviously watched a lot. So you you're unlike most people because you, you you know you have a, a taste and a feel and a knowledge of not only the knowledge of martial arts but the people that have done this. And it's interesting on your particular what you do. You give them a chance to say you can sit there. You break it down for them. You know, you broke down my form. You, know, you, broke, you broke down my form and sit there going, okay. I'm always fascinated. I, I always like when people, because I was always taught when I was young, don't change your style. Get your, get your black belt and then learn another style. And it's always, I always like seeing how people can take five or six different styles and blend them together. It's, it's always well, fascinating see, to me. That's what I did. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what I did. I would get, you know, I'd study one and get it to where I was proficient at it. And then I would say, I want to, I want to blend it with something else. I want to blend a form and uh, do that. But there are, you know, there are certain things that are comfortable. You know, you know your your stance, your move. You know how how you, I, my stance. I, I kind of do this. I don't want to say I use the same basic stance, but I have a form that that it's I'm comfortable at. You know, I have a form when I'm getting ready to fight. You'll see me get into it. And that's a form I'm comfortable with. I, my sides are I'm guarded. My sides are guarded. My front's guarded. And I'm ready. And but it's it's something that I do. You other people have different forms, and I admire that. You know, there's. I'm always I always get jealous, man. You know, I get you know, all the people you you've mentioned. You know, while we've been talking, I've sit there. And there's something about every one of them that I just sit there and go, "Damn, I wish I could do that as well as they do it." You know. Well, let me ask because I don't know if you've seen it yet, but I know you got to work with Nick Cage in The Rock. Oh yeah, I actually worked with him twice. I did one. It was called. Uh, I think they called it Wings of the Apache or something like that years ago. Tommy Lee Jones. Oh yes, yes. Yeah, worked with him in that, and then we worked with him in The Rock. And I, I enjoyed work. He's he's very studied. I mean, he knows what he's knows what he wants. He comes to the set ready to work. He has a martial arts movie very coming good. out called Jiu Jitsu. I wondered if you'd seen the trailer for it yet. No, I have not seen the trailer. <laughs> it looks out there to say the least. Well, I know I, my understanding is he has some great people working with him and around it and on it. You know, he has a lot of good people that are working on it that, you know, where he's lacking here, they can, they'll, they'll you know, they'll make, they'll show him how to look good. That's for sure. Well, that's I don't even, I don't even know if he ever, I, I know he dabbled in martial arts for a while. I don't know how far he went in martial arts. And you always have to make someone look. Good. The one thing I was always good at was I was I would uke okay for people all the time because if, if even if your move wasn't going to look good when you were testing, boy, I'd throw myself like it was a pro wrestling match. I'd make you look like a million bucks. I actually broke two ribs doing it for a guy once, but uh, yeah, that was something that I always liked to do. But to say it's the same thing in movies, though. You know, when you take on a character, <clears throat> it wasn't my job to make. Buddy look good. It was my job to make us look both look mm -hmm. so ominous, so ominous. My job and his job, and he did his job great. My job was to make it look even more ominous, and that worked because we were there for each other, and that's what you have to do. You have to be there for each other. I've gotten fired a couple of times on movies that I got hired on and fired the next day because, you know, I'm not going to mention, you know, names, but one because they said they didn't want to fight me. And it's kind of like, I'm not there to beat you up. I'm there to make the film better. Mm -hmm. You know, and I don't know where that came from. You know, it's kind of like, I'm not there to steal your thunder. I'm not just to play my thunder and make it roar to make you look even better. That's what I'm there for. If I'm a bad enough bad guy and you kick my ass, I mean, it's, who, who looks who looks better? Well, yeah, that's why, uh, you know, if a lot of the great movies, the uh, Stallone, everybody he fights is bigger than him. Everybody that uh, you know Van Damme would fight bigger than him. You know you, you're beating a monster. Yeah, 
Yeah. Do you still have yeah. your shark tooth earring from Roadhouse? You know, I, I have, well, the, the tooth, the, the, you're talking about the, I have that uh, the, with snake and the, the snake thing uh, yeah. that wore around my neck. Yeah. Yes, I do. I still have it. I still have the cross. The very last one that I, there was, uh, that I had, because most of them got ripped out of my ear. Oh. And I had, I had a dozen of them made. And I had two of them made originally. They said, can you get some more because they fall out and things like that? I didn't know they were going to get ripped out. Mm, yeah, I've had earrings but, ripped out. That sucks. It, it's, yeah. <laughs> Try having nearly a dozen ripped out. <laughs> I'm always fascinated by what people, you know, from their iconic characters, what they've kept, if they still have it over the years. Do you still have Well, I, st- I still have that neck piece. I absolutely have it. Some I've had, had people know I have it, and I've had people offer me a lot of money for it. And I say, no, you didn't earn it. Yeah, I, what, are you gonna, what, what are you going to do with it? You're going to stick it up and say, oh, this was worn by blah, blah, blah. Yeah, and you're just, you know, yeah, I own it. I have it. It's the only one there is. You know, I wore it, you know, and then after it was over, I took it with me. And I took the very last cross. I had the last cross that I had made from my ear there, and I have it in a plastic bag in my safe. You know, it's yeah, like the sword I, sword I carried in uh, Babylon 5, you know, where I was a Narn. Mm-hmm. I had that sword made off my, I have a 15th century katana. I had my sword for that movie, for the television show, made off of that. And it was made by a lot of people. I mean, I had great people come in to build that sword and make it. But there's only one of them. Yeah, there's only one. I hate to coin a phrase from a movie. There can be only one. <laughs> but there's there's only one. They never made a duplicate. You, you know, they just didn't. You still have the pool cue from Roadhouse? Uh, no. Because that would be kind of cool. Well, that, they broke so many things yeah, in that yeah. movie. <laughs> My God, I mean, they had they had all this furniture made up, you know, the breakaway furniture. Of course, we were breaking furniture left and right, chairs, tables, you name it. Behind the place, there was this pile of destroyed furniture out behind the double deuce, where they'd put it out there at night because they're going to take it and burn it someplace, or chop it up, or do something with it. But no, I mean, we destroyed that place and the pool sticks. I mean. I think they got broken or something. I, you know, I, I started to, I started to take it, but you know, no, I didn't. I mean, I think I think Terry Funk destroyed the bar in two different scenes. Oh, Terry, the Funk man, <laughs> great man. Another another gentle giant. Yeah, meeting him was. Uh, yeah, that was that was def- I don't want to. That was definitely a, a shot. Oh, Terry Funk. Well, hello there, Sonny. How no, yeah, like, no, sw- who the yeah, hell no, is I, this? I, I, why do you do what you do, Terry? Well, I got to take care of my babies. <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah, and he was just he was just soft as voice until he worked. Oh, and he was a big <laughs> guy. You bet your ass he was. His whole family was big. Mm-hmm. I mean, what is that? Three, four generations of funks. Yeah, I, I think if, uh, now it's just. I wonder how big the girls are going to be. <sighs> I don't know, but I'm not going to piss one of them off. No, that's uh, that was kind of neat to to see him in the roadhouse. I think is is it. You know, my son. I showed him when he was like nine. He loved it. I mean, that's a movie that's. I mean, it's on paper. It sounds so ridiculous, but it, you know, so well done. You know, you could see the camaraderie of everybody. Everybody I mean, was on the same page. You know, everybody was on the same page when that movie started. It was just interesting because you know, like you said, you know. People come to, you know, you go to movies, you show up, where's my trailer, this, that. But everybody on this movie, it was a different ball game. Everybody was, yeah, there, I'll be there to safety you on this. And I mean, it didn't matter who it is. They just came out of the woodwork. I'll safety you on this. Okay, you, know, you need to help stretch out. Everybody, everybody was on it. It didn't matter who you were. Everybody was on this thing. And Buddy, you know, it made Buddy Buddy's day because, you know, he, Buddy could make friends with a stump. You know, just that kind of guy. But everybody cared for him and wanted the movie to be good. We knew, you know. I mean, at the time, I think the budget on that movie—I heard something like eight between eighteen and twenty million dollars for that movie. Mm-hmm. And uh, of course, it wasn't the biggest budget film in the world. And I and there were talk that you know, you know, they made the movie to fail. And that the the you know, this is what I heard. 
not saying it's fact. I'm just saying that's what I heard. But they made the movie to fail because if they make a movie and it doesn't make money, they can use that as a write-off for their big films, you know. Mm -hmm. was, but uh, it didn't fail. No, you know, and they didn't. They didn't do a lot of advertising on it. If you remember, they they did not do a lot of advertising for Roadhouse. No, and it just kind of hit. I mean, all the all the women were in love with with him. You know, he had the dirty dancing and all. He was this. Yeah, 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 yeah. We got, we got that see, every day. We got the big bar fights and everything. The karate. I mean, it just it it hit every it hit every age group. Every you know, it hit every, it hit everything possible. It hit every demographic. <laughs> One of the first interviews I did, somebody asked me about more down at Roadhouse. I said, tell you the truth, we went to a fight and a movie broke out. <laughs> and that's usually, the, I always kind of throw that in because, no, it's not considered, you know, the best cinematic of anything. But if you think about history and you think about cinema and you look around, you figure that now, what, 31, 32 years later? Mm -hmm. And it shows every week somewhere. And I get people all the time. I don't care where you go. People sit there. Yeah, I watched Roadhouse last night. Everywhere. You know, it's kind of like, I watched Roadhouse. I love it. You know, we just did a little con back in Tennessee. You know, I got to go to my hometown. And it's amazing how many people came up and said, I'd like you to meet my son. His name's Dalton. <laughs> Swear. You know, these couples will come up. Yeah, that's our favorite movie. We sit and watch it all the time. You know, and you just got to smile and say, thank you. Thank you. That little piece of cinematic immortality. If, you know, I guess if there's a way of putting it. What did you think of part two? Uh, I'm just going to leave that alone. <laughs> I, uh, I don't know why they did it. I, I don't know why they had Dalton's son. I, I, I didn't understand it in the least. Um, you know they asked Buddy and I to be in it. Well, you were dead, weren't you? I was exactly <laughs> he, my point. He killed you, so they I, were going to bring me back. Just bring me back as my ugly, uh, ugly other brother that just got out of prison, or something like that. No, but they asked us both to be in it somehow. And it's kind of like you have got to be kidding me. Yeah, you cannot remake this movie. No. And if you remember, just a couple of years ago, they were going to take Ronda Rousey. Uh, and they were gonna do, they were gonna do it again. Yeah, I didn't. Then she got knocked out horribly twice, and all the plans for that got scrapped. Well, I think they were planning this till Holly Holmes walked in the ring. Oh, I mean, and it was over. That was a mugging. That wasn't even a fight. That was a mugging. Yeah, I wasn't going to say anything, but you're absolutely correct. I mean, then her when she made her comeback a year later, that was. A bigger mugging. I, I don't. I don't know what happened there. Well, that one was quicker, wasn't it? Yeah, I think. Well, they were both. She was. She was yeah, they, smashed in a round in each one. So. Yeah, I mean the second one. I think it was even shorter than the Holly Holmes fight. And Holly, you know, Holly didn't waste any time. But Holly got. She tried to break bad on Holly right out of the box, and then Holly just said no, none of that, and bam. Yeah. See ya. I don't know if she was, what happened. I, I mean, I've always kind of attested. I mean, anybody that does that's a tough human being in their own right, not to discredit them. But I, I think she just uh, had a lot of fights kind of with people that, you know, weren't in that class. You know, it built her up, well, made her I, I, don't, I, don't know how you, I don't really know how you'd look at it. I remember her from when she was a little girl. And Jean LaBelle, you know, had a lot. You know, her mother, obviously, had a big part of this. And Jean LaBelle, you know, was a family friend, you know, was helped and got her into it. And, you know, and it's always been, you know, he's always been close to her. You know, so every time she fought, Jean was right there. Mm -hmm. And she was good. I mean, come on. You, you don't win that. You don't win that, I think, with bronze medal in judo, you know, for, for being a for being a wimp. And no. she should have had the, she should have had silver. She should have had silver, possibly even gold. But. You know, but she was she was tough, and uh, of course she brought that what she was exceedingly good at, and I do mean exceedingly good at, into a ring with girls that were not exceedingly good at it. They might be good fighters. They might have been good ground and pound. They could have been good technique, you know, uh, jujitsu. But uh, what her what she had, and she had those moves, and she could get a, get her hands on you. It was over. 
quick. She had a nice little career in WWF wrestling for the year she was there. Is she out of it now? I don't even know. She was there for about a year, and, and that was it. she must have signed a one year contract, and she had her big, and she did good. She was fine. She fit in very good. Athletic. She fit in good. They had her deemed with the right people, and after a year, she was just gone. So I, I, I have not heard what she's doing now. I haven't seen her in over a year in any aspect of sports or interviews, for that matter. I haven't either. I mean, like I said, I always, I always backed her, you know, and, and, and I was asked in an interview, what do you think about it? I said, look, guys, here's what I think about it. I said, can you remake Roadhouse? No. no. However, if you're planning on making one and you want to do it from a different perspective, which is what you're describing to me, uh, you know, she has earned her belt, you know, say what you want to, but she actually earned it. She earned them, you know, but there, there's always going to be a, you know, I don't care how big you are, how tough you are, how mean you are, or anything else, like, there's always somebody that can beat you. Oh, well, especially in the case of Ultimate Fighting, you see these, you know, you see a big, I mean, there's no other way to say it, you'll see a big roided up monster, they'll fight some skinny guy, and they're they're on the floor. Yeah, and, cho and choked out or spread out or, you know, hand arm barred or something, they're done. But, you, you know, you take the best. I mean, uh, Hughes. You remember Hughes? Oh, yeah. The, the, one of the baddest baddest ever walk in the ring. Mm-hmm. And one day, you know, somebody just had his number. Mm-hmm. And beat him. And that's going to happen to everybody. It doesn't matter who you are. I mean, I've been I've been knocked out. I've, I don't mind telling people, yeah, I've been knocked out. You're damn right I've been knocked out. You know, I've been choked out. Yeah, I've been choked out. That's not pleasant. Ah, you just get used to it after a while, especially if you work with Carlos. Because <laughs> we'll do what we did in rehearsal. He choked me out one time doing a rehearsal. We're doing a big fight scene. He choked me out. And, and he, wasn't, he didn't make, wasn't trying to choke me out. It just that he had the grip. And as we moved around, he kept, you know, ascension his grip. You know, like anybody would. He just moved with it. And we were trying to work through this fight. You know, in my mind, I was working through the fight with him. But he kept cinching. And all of a sudden, you notice I started getting tunnel vision. You know, the light starts <laughs> yep. traveling up. And I guess I was out cold, and, and her, his brother, who was, you know, directing it, comes over and he pops me in the top of the head. Come on, Marsha, quit screwing around. I'm trying to shoot a show here. <laughs> and Carlos reached out, pulled my hair, you know, pulled my head back, looked at him. He said, oh, he's out. And my wife was standing over to the side, and he looked over, and I said, hey, she, she, she kind of tilted my face toward her, and she just nodded and smiled. Said, yeah, he's out. <laughs> I, I'd rather be knocked out than I've been knocked out and choked out. I'd rather be knocked out. It's less painful. <laughs> yeah, don't like either one of them, but you know I felt them both. And uh, anybody that says I've never been, I just look at them. You've never fought. The worst is when you pass out from a gut shot. That's about as bad as you get. <sighs> well, I don't know. I'm going to have to go with a kidney. Uh, I've never. I only have one kidney, so I always protect it very heavily. <laughs> well, and that's good. But if you've ever been, you've ever had somebody get you the kidney shot. Oh, Lord, that, I, I'd actually rather take a shot to the face. That was the last shot Brock Lesnar took in the UFC. He got kicked in that kidney, and that you heard him moan. Him down. He fell to that ground, and that was it. Well, let me tell you what. I have been. You know, I've been hit there a couple of times, and you know, and it'll get your attention in a hurry. When, when you can move correctly again, you know, for there's a while, you're not going to be doing a whole lot of moving. Because you're afraid if you move, everything's going to hurt, including your hair. So, you know. Yeah, I've, I've always been spared that. I've had some nasty rib shots. Uh, I've had some yeah. bad, close to the heart shots. I've, yeah, I've, you've had those. I know you've been hit solar plaques. You've felt oh, that God, many yes. times. Yeah, see, my son doesn't seem to understand. Like, when he would do, when they would compete, you know, there there's uh, chest plates, headgear, <laughs> gloves, she, you know, uh, leg pads, yeah, what's, what's ankle that? pads. It was like, I was like, I, I give you credit. You can move in them. I was like, we just got our asses beat. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. Somebody would say that. I looked at that one day. I said, what's those for? Just so you don't get hit. I went, wow. I never saw any of that. <laughs> no, I, and, and I could never spar in it. I mean, I always found Maybe that. Maybe could. I tried. I tried. I couldn't do it. I got hit. My headgear turned sideways. I got frustrated. I threw it off. <laughs> it, <and> I was... <laughs> Same. <laughs> Same as you. Never, never was a fan. No, I mean, I would, I would put it on if I was catching for somebody and working some techniques. If somebody's trying to work some techniques, yeah, I'd put it on because I wanted to throw it. 
you know, I'm not going to throw a lot. You know, I'm going to throw something to get them to move. You know, if you know, but it was one of those where I knew that was what I was doing. I was wanting them to. I, wa- I wanted them to make. I wanted them to feel what it felt like to make the hit. Mm-hmm. You know, I wanted them to do it. You know, and they always, you know, you, most people say, well, "I don't want." To. No, dude, trust me. Because I'm wearing this, I'm okay. Throw it. I want to feel it. I want you to feel what you're doing because if you don't feel what you're doing you're never going to know how it's going to feel to the person if you ever get into it mm-hmm. so believe me i want you to throw it <clears throat> i don't mind as a parent my kid wearing headgear he don't I, I think i had about four concussions we know of probably about 13 we didn't but uh, you know i don't want him to get his bell rung that hard but yeah but who's counting who's yeah, counting it's... i don't count yeah we both we both had those and no i don't even count <laughs> yeah, it's you know, I mean, it's it's just it's all part of the sport. Yeah, it is part of the sport, and you're right. It's 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 a it's a it's a sport you love, and, and you know, and it's a sport that becomes a way of life. I don't know. Yeah, there's, I mean, there's people that, that have sports and they retire. Yeah, martial arts you don't retire from. I, I've been hit with size staffs. I, I mean, I've been hit with everything under the sun, and I've oh, yeah. never pick, pick gotten mad about it, never anything. It's just an accident. Sure. I mean, nobody's intentionally going out to take a, you know, take a book and, and pop you on the arm harder than they should have. You know, they don't intend to. Of course, you're, you're going to end up bruised, and they're going to look at you and you go, really? man, I'm really sorry. I didn't mean to do that. It's okay. We won't do it again. I had the bright idea when I was young to soak nunchucks in uh, lighter fluid and light them on fire to spin them well, I had dribbled it all over my jeans at the same time. In my defense, I was about ten. Oh, I lit my pants on fire when I flung those things around. Of course you around. did. So, of you know, course that, you did. That was one of the more stupid things I've done. Well, but uh, well, I'm, I'm happy to say that I never did that one. I'm you know, glad to, glad to hear it was you and not me. I lit a carpet on fire trying to knock candles out with nunchucks, like in a movie I saw. And I got two of them, but that third one, I just hit the candle, it fell on the carpet, and they were in a small Can't fire. Cut the carpet so, on fire. There you go. Yeah, so there's uh, some stupidity involved in it, too, for, in my yeah. part. <laughs> yeah, I worked with them. I mean, I'm like anybody else you've ever worked with. Of course, you you, you know, you know, try to do it back behind your behind your, behind your your shoulder, roll over with it. Of course, you hit yourself in the head, you know, or hit, your, hit yourself in the arm or in the back or whatever. And you sit there and say, I really have to slow this down and learn to do it correctly. I, I knocked myself. I don't know how I didn't get knocked out trying to spin a uh, three section staff over my head, and I got some good momentum going, and then it just cracked me right in the face. Uh, the fact I wasn't knocked out shocks me because I was not goofy. Well, that is one. That is one of the weapons I have never worked. Um, it, it's weird. I, I'm not good at it. Not at all. There are people that are great at it, and uh, I've seen them. You know, and, uh, doing forms and things like that. Weapons forms. That yeah, I was basically sword. That uh, bow, I'd use size, you know, I'd do size. Well, bow staff I liked a lot. Oh, obviously. Staff's my you know, favorite. Staff's my favorite of all of them. What's the most practical? You can pick up a shovel, a broom, anything, a pool cue. Anything. Yeah, it's, uh, that, that's the smartest thing to learn. And if it breaks in half, what do you got? <laughs> you, got two, you got two screamers. You got screamer sticks. You got screamer sticks. Now you go to work. And then knife. I always was a knife guy. Yeah, me too. I like more practical weapons. Uh, Sai, I'm okay. I can do forms with them. I can't spin them around and twirl them, but uh, I can do okay. I used to used to do it a lot, but I just got you know, kind of put them away. Subsequently, you pick them up years later. You start that, and you go, God, there was a time when this I could get them both going like this, and now I can't do it. So it's kind of like I just put them back on the wall. So at it one time, yes, I knew how to use these. Yeah. No, I don't now. Thank you. I'll pick up every, you know, from time to time, I'll go down in the basement, I'll take something off the wall and mess with it until I, you know, cut myself sure. or hit myself, sure. and then it goes right back into its slot. Same here. Same here. Well, I want to thank you so much. I've taken up quite a bit of your time. I want to thank you so much. I have for, enjoyed it immensely. I have enjoyed it. I really have. I love talking martial arts. I can talk martial arts more than I can talk movies. And that's well, saying you know, something. That's, and me, you've got me, you've got me on both ends. So I'll talk whatever you want to talk but it's uh you know it's really been a pleasure and i'm glad we finally got a chance to do this and i hope it comes across well to people that are listening i don't have any idea if we're live or not but uh, no we, we are, are live well when it goes out you know just let me know what's out there so i can find it and I'll, but i've enjoyed it i mean i really have i mean we've talked we've talked a pretty broad spectrum 
Oh, I hope uh, we can, about hope a we lot can of do it again one day. And, pardon me? I hope we can do it again one day. Oh, sure. Be fine. Be just fine. You know, just, I'm just glad uh, Brad's can hook us up. I am too. I, he's hooked me up with a lot of interesting people, but uh, you're the one I've had the longest conversation with, to be honest with you. Well, it's been my honor. I want you to know that. Well, I can't, it has been my honor. I can't thank you enough. We'll do it again. Thank you for your time, ladies and gentlemen. You have been listening to the Chronicles of Hollywood History. Thank you from Gomez Richmond Productions.